Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another video about what I've been putting up as far as food goes, how I've been preserving it. So let's start with the canned goods you'll see right here. Now we had to make a run into town the other day, which is something we try to only do at the very most, maybe once every three or four months. We just had some business we needed to take care of in there. So whenever we do that, we do make it a point to go to both the Costco and the Coastal. The Coastal is kind of like a better version, I personally believe, of the tractor supply here along the West Coast. I believe it started here in Washington. And anyway, I love that store. In fact, we did a video about it a year or so ago. I'll go ahead and link to it in the description box below if you're curious. But that place has everything. So anyway, that is where we like to get our organic chicken feed. It's the only place anywhere somewhat near us, and it's still 75 miles away, that sells organic, non-GMO, soy-free chicken feed. And they have an excellent price, much better than any place I can get online anywhere. So anyway, while we were in there, I went ahead and bought another bag of carrots it's a big bag and my refrigerator is already full of produce right now so i canned most of the carrots up so we'll have along with the carrots i've already put up we'll have plenty of those and then recently my sister-in-law she had been given a whole bunch of sweet potatoes and a lot more than she could ever use so she gave me her excess and i decided to go ahead and can that up too because i knew we wouldn't be working through all that my first time canning sweet potatoes i did it no different than i do anything else except for i actually took the time to look it up online about the times for canning sweet potatoes into pints and so uh only 65 minutes on pints and then i did find out sure enough with carrots you can go as little as 25 minutes pressure canning carrots into pint jars that really surprised me so the people i had mentioned that on that video i did about canning carrots were right i had just went by my book and my assumption that all vegetables were the same and needed to be 75 minutes for pints and 90 minutes for quarts but each one is a little bit different and so this year what I might do because I am really really running low on freezer space we have a couple of good sized freezers plus the freezer on our refrigerator and they're stocked full of meat and milk and other things so I'm canning a lot more stuff this year and when my pie pumpkins are ready I might consider even canning them now one thing you want to know about squash it's they say you should not puree it and then can it you chunk it up like i did here with the sweet potatoes which can also be used for making a pumpkin pie or a replacement for pumpkin and pumpkin pie anyway so then it would be sweet potato pie depending on where you keep them a lot of times if you have a cool enough place you can keep pumpkins and certain other squash pretty much through the year just in a cold storage room somewhere if you have a root cellar that's ideal but anyway I may consider canning it so if I do that I'm gonna chunk it up like this that's the best way to can it then if you want to use it in a pie or something where you're gonna have it pureed that's when you puree it and it's a little easier to do it that way anyway just chunk it up throw it in your jars add some water I didn't put any salt in these because I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with them I may decide instead of uh, maybe I'll use my pumpkin for making a pumpkin pie and then maybe make some candied yams slash sweet potatoes out of these. So I don't know. We'll see. Come Thanksgiving, I'm, I think I'm going to give it a try. Those are two things I canned this week. Now I haven't, I'm kind of getting down to that time of the year where I'm finishing up with all my canning projects because I really only like to do my canning outside when before the heavy rains come. So usually through the summer. And so I try to get all that stuff done this time of year. Everything else is dehydrating and freezing. I've got, you can see back here, I've got a lot of zucchini. I just picked three of those yesterday. And there's another one right here that I picked the day before that I, I've already cut the end off on because I've already started using it. I have a lot of zucchini dehydrated up. I'm going to, I think I'm going to go ahead and do one more jar. You can actually fit... I could actually fit all four of those zucchinis easily enough into a jar like this, into a quart jar. So I think I might be doing that. I haven't decided yet. My freezer space is so precious right now that 
I may cave and use some Ziploc bags and freeze some up because I do like having some of my zucchini frozen up. I do have some from last year that I haven't worked through yet that's frozen into jars. But the bad thing about jars, freezing into jars, is it takes up so much space. And I have a lot of jars in my freezers as it is right now. So I may cave and do the Ziploc bags like I did the other day with these sweet peppers I bought. So Costco also had the sweet peppers. Sadly, they were not organic, but it's so hard to find a good sweet pepper around here that's organic. And I didn't grow any this year. In fact, I've grown some very much like this. I'm pretty sure this looks like the Marconi sweet pepper. But the difference was is this bag came with like this burgundy brown colored one and an orange one too. And boy, they're good. And so what I did was uh, frozen sweet peppers are really good for using for anything, whether you're gonna make pepper steak, fajitas, or even pizza. I usually use them a lot on my homemade pizza. So because of my freezer space, yes, I went ahead and caved and used Ziploc bags because I don't have a food saver anymore. Got rid of that nonsense. A good Ziploc bag that's made for using in the freezer can keep your stuff well preserved in the freezer for at least a year. I've had no issues and usually I'm, and I know I'm going to work through those peppers in that amount of time. No problem. Another thing I did though, while I was cutting those peppers up to freeze was decided to save the seeds and I'm going to try planting them and see if I can grow them next year. So some of my food preservation pro projects right now are, are focused more on seed saving. Yes, that's a form of food preservation because I'm preserving seeds for next year's food. So one of the things here, I got a couple tomato seeds. A lot of times what I do is I cut slices and I dry them on the paper towels. But because I got to these, they were they were really ripe when I went to cut them. The seeds just kind of gushed out onto the paper towel anyway. So I just decided to dry them like that. And then I've got them marked. And what I did was, now I don't put these in the dehydrator. I've thought about it. I'm a little nervous about doing that myself, but I just went ahead and laid them on plates in the sun and then let them dry like that. And the nice thing about this is I can just rip off as a little piece if I want or a whole thing. A lot of times what I do though, just save them in slices and then put a whole slice in a little four inch pot when I go to start them in the late winter, early spring. And that has worked really good for me. But if you're interested in more information about that, go ahead and check out those videos. Just one of the many ways that you can save tomato seeds. This is the easiest I have found and has worked the best for me when it comes to growing the tomatoes the next year. Now, when it comes to herbs, I'm about done collecting my herbs. The only three I've been doing lately, actually four, are the red clover, calendula flowers, comfrey leaves. I'm still getting some new ones coming in, thankfully. Uh, plantain leaves and then rose petals. The nice thing about our roses is they kind of go through the spurt where they put out a whole bunch in the spring and then they don't put out any for a little while and then in the early fall, late summer, early fall, they'll put out a bunch more so I'm doing that and then of course taking some of those fresh rose petals and nasturtium flowers and making some vinegar that I use for my hair wash so that's what's back there. Now that bag that you see there, that Mylar bag, that is my white cheddar powder that I ordered. So I wanted to show that. I'm gonna do a video just on using Mylar bags because I did go ahead and buy some. It is a very good and viable option for storing dried goods. If you have a shortage on jars or you just can't find any jars or you don't have a good way to vacuum seal into your jars because the food saver tops are hard to find and those canisters that you can put the jars down inside if you don't already have those, they're expensive to buy. But Mylar bags are getting expensive now too. The price gouging is happening everywhere. So I recommend you get some of various different sizes. If you can, I recommend getting Ziploc ones. That's what I thought I was ordering here and was a little disappointed to get them in and find out they're not Ziploc, but I'm gonna use them anyway. But I'll be shooting a video here that you'll probably see in maybe a couple weeks or so about using the Mylar bags and how to use them. So uh, be watching for that if you're interested. And then to talk about a few more things. So once my I was done collecting snow peas and freezing them, because to me freezing, the two best ways to 
preserve your snow peas is either freezing or dehydrating. No blanching before you do either. I recommend never blanch your snow peas. It, it just makes them nasty. So even though you might look it up online that you're supposed to blanch, no, don't do it. Not with your snow peas, not with your green beans. I don't recommend it. Uh, they're so much better if you just put them, cut them up fresh, either freeze them immediately. I've frozen a bunch of those in jars. I have, I don't remember how many, maybe 24 uh, little half pint jars. Once I was done doing that, I let the rest of my snow peas go to seed. And so here's just some of them right here. I've been shelling the, the dried ones. And so that's one of the things, some of them I'll be saving for planting next year, but they are also a new item added to our store this year, our own organic snow pea. I never remember what the name of it is, but if you go to our Etsy store, you'll see if you're interested. Love these snow peas. They put out a ton of peas, even though they're said to get five feet tall. If you give them a tall enough area to climb, they will just keep growing. They will keep going. They will get 10 feet tall if you allow them to and they are heavy producers. I love these things because of that. So, and because they're heavy producers, that's why we were able to have plenty to put up on our store for this year to share with others. And of course, still save some for ourselves. And then here are some yarrow seed heads. I've been making, you know, putting those back up on the store. And then the beans, they have a ways to go yet. They're still hanging out there on the vines. They're actually still growing right now. And here today is what, September 13th, I believe it is. And they're still growing. So I'm just letting them do their thing. But once they're all done growing and before the heavy rains come, I like to pull my bean plants up and then hang them in the greenhouse. Otherwise, they will rot in our heavy rains. Normally what you would do if you live in a dry enough area, you just leave them out there and let them dry completely on the vines. That just doesn't work well for us or they'll rot. That's not an issue with the snow peas because they finish up much sooner than the beans do. This year I have decided for sure I'll be selling the runner beans. I can't guarantee how much I'll have up there, but I have plenty for ourselves, a uh, seed that I can plant those next year. So whatever we get from this year is going up on our store. Oh, and before I go, I wanted to do an update on some meat things that I have preserved. So one being the ground beef, still loving it. It's still good. It's a few months old and I'm still working through my first jar. I've made several things with this. I think it's mostly been a spaghetti sauce, but I think I made something else using the ground beef. So the dehydrated ground beef is just, it's wonderful. Now let's talk about the chicken. So some of you have may have already dehydrated up some cooked chicken and found that it's a little tough when you go to use it. Now the first time I tried it, I knew it was going to be tough, but I tried it anyway. I just let it soak in a little bit of water and some homemade wine to use in a stir fried rice and it just didn't hydrate up well enough and it was a little chewy. It still tasted great and it still tastes great right out of the jar, but it, it is definitely tougher and a lot harder to rehydrate than let's say your ground beef or certain other like fruits and vegetables. But what I did do was I made some chicken enchiladas the other night, and sorry, I didn't get any pictures. Lately, I've been forgetting to take pictures of these things. But what I did differently was I took the meat, um, I knew I was gonna cook it in the sauce anyway, because I already had a little bit of experience with how tough and dry it is right out of the jar like this. A day before I stuck it in a small saucepan again with a little bit of water and some homemade wine. The homemade wine's not necessary. I just add that for the flavor. And then let that just simmer in the pan for a long time the day before I made the enchiladas. Then the next day I took that I stuck it in the refrigerator for the night and then the next day I took it, it was still a little dry and tough, and then added it to the sauce when I went, went to make the enchilada sauce and then let that simmer for quite a while. And that did help quite a bit. Still a little bit chewy, but definitely still really good. So it can be used, but what I've decided is maybe I'll go ahead and, though I, I might still do a jar like this every now and then just because I don't mind snacking on it like this. However, um, maybe for making freezer space, I'm gonna stick to doing that with the ground beef 
or uh, taking some roast and making jerky out of it. And yes, I have videos on the ground beef and also on how to make your own homemade jerky. I've got a couple old videos out there on that. And if you've already dehydrated up, just keep playing with it. I'm gonna keep working with it because I still have two more jars and there's at least a half to three quarters of a chicken in each one of these jars. So they're not gonna go to waste, that is for sure. I mean, if worse comes to worse and someone's starving to death, chewing on a chunk of that dried chicken it still has a wonderful flavor even if it is a little bit tough and i also know some people said there are other things that you can do uh, before you dehydrate it that work better and i can't remember what it was but maybe those people that have heard and got some good suggestions on that can go ahead and put that down below and then one more meat project that I did recently, which was definitely a success, was the homemade meatballs that I canned. Got this idea from a couple of different subscribers. Thank you for that, by the way. So the other night, I used it to make my, what I normally would do, which is I simply made a white gravy. I started off using the broth that's already inside the jar and use that to add the flour to and kind of saute a few different vegetables. I will add things like my dehydrated zucchini to that and some dried herbs from my garden, uh, onions, garlic, and then I'll, I just let that saute a little bit to soften all those things. Then I added my, uh, I think in that one, in fact, I used a dried uh, milk powder, a uh, whole milk powder. I think it was the goat milk powder. Since I already had the broth, that, that just made sense to go ahead and add the milk powder to that and then add water as needed. And that turned out pretty good. And we like to serve that over rice. So if you're already making your own meatballs or uh, meat loaf, so that's just a way to make it a little bit quicker and get some of the ground meats out of your freezer. And then you're like, hey, I wanna make meatballs and gravy tonight. The gravy's pretty quick to make, so is the rice or noodles if you prefer to serve it over that. Then you just throw in your meatballs at the end, you know, when you're about, the gravy's about done, just throw them in there and just enough time for them to heat through before you're ready to serve them. And so that made the job just a little bit quicker because I tell you things have been so busy. It's been super nice having some meals like this that are easy to prepare and you know to throw together quickly you know so that I can make sure Patrick gets his dinner and and he's not being cheated and yet I can still have time to get my other stuff done lots of things that you can can soups and all kinds of stuff chili is another one of our favorite things to can and and have as an emergency uh, fast food all right well I hope you enjoyed my video this week on what's preserving here in rain country thanks for watching take care and God bless